stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, The Man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, I am reviewing the Rogue cards from A Phantom of Truth, the third Mythos pack in the Path to Carcosa cycle. As you're probably aware by now, I've uh, split up the review of the, this Mythos pack into five parts, so it's a little bit easier to to, uh, gi- to digest. So make sure you check out the reviews for the uh, cards in the other classes when you've got the time. There are spoilers throughout if you care about that sort of thing. If you enjoy what you hear, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. So with that in mind, let's see uh, how Arkham Horrors Rogues fare in uh, in this Mythos pack. The first rogue card in the pack is an event. This is Cheap Shot. It costs two resources and has combat and agility skill icons. It has the trick trait and the game text fight. Add your agility value to your skill value for this attack. If you succeed by two or more, automatically evade the attacked enemy. Now, uh, Cheap Shot is the second card in this Mythos pack that uh, changes up the skills that you use to pass skill tests. As uh, we saw during the Seeker card review, uh, Archaic Glyph's Prophecy Foretold lets you pass an Investigate skill test in order to evade an enemy, while uh, Cheap Shot lets you use a combination of combat and agility to uh, damage an enemy and evade it. Now, at uh, first blush, Cheap Shot reminded me a lot of uh, Blinding Light, the uh, mystic event from the core set. If you play a Blinding Light and uh, pass the Evade skill test, you uh, evade the enemy and deal it one damage. Now, Cheap Shot is similar, except you need to pass a fight skill test using your combat and agility to deal the enemy one damage. And if you pass the skill test by two or more, you automatically evade it too. The the two cards even cost the same, although that's probably by coincidence more than by design. But uh, these two cards are quite different because uh, Cheap Shot is... uh, It's extremely interesting because it gives investigators with access to the rogue card pool a way to evade an enemy that is not engaged with them. Now, there aren't many ways to do that at the moment. The only two I could find uh, are Cunning Distraction and uh, Stray Cat, both uh, survivor cards from the core set. Now, playing Cheap cheap Shot could certainly come in handy in multiplayer if an investigator ends up uh, pinned down by an enemy, Skidzo Tool could swoop in and uh, deliver the cheap shot, damaging the enemy and evading it, giving the uh, other investigator a chance to escape. If you're uh, playing cheap shot in combination with the level 2 version of pickpocketing, which is uh, also in this set, you get a card and a resource as well as the damage, and uh, I really like that type of uh, that type of synergy. However, there is a catch, and uh, that is that you must pass the fight skill test by two or more, Obviously, uh, you only do one damage for two resources, which isn't all that impressive. Now, I made a video last year about the succeed by two mechanic in rogues, but it's probably worth taking a moment to uh, to take a look at the odds. So, uh, I've put this little example together. If we assume that we're you know playing the Midnight Masks on standard difficulty, and we assume there's an acolyte with one Doom token on it in play, so the skulls are minus one. If you're playing Cheap Shot, Skidzo Tool has the highest base skill value in the game at 7. That's his uh, combat and agility combined. Followed by uh, Jenny Barnes and Safina Russo at 6 apiece. Wendy Adams has a 5 due to her extremely low combat skill. As, uh, as long as Skids, Jenny, and Safina are 4 up before the pull, they've got about a 75% chance of pulling off the Cheap Shot. Those odds dip to uh, 56.25 if they're only 3 up before the pull and uh, those odds take a significant uh, dive if you're only two up, so you're really in Hail Mary territory uh, at that point. Ideally, you would like to be four up before the pull to uh, to make the cheap shot. Now, this shouldn't be a big problem for skids, since most of the enemies in the Midnight Masks have a fight value of three or less. Uh, Wolf Mandrew, the Cannibal, and uh, the Wizard of the Order are the only two enemies that will present a serious challenge, and Skid still has a 56.25% chance of pulling off a cheap shot against them. Now, Jenny Barnes, Safina Russo, and uh, Wendy Adams are going to have a more difficult time pulling off the cheap shot consistently without pitching cards and or resources to boost their skill values, or playing Daring Maneuver, an event uh, that was released in the Path to Carcosa Deluxe expansion that gives you plus two skill value for the test if you succeed. 
That's not great considering Cheap Shot is, Cheap Shot is uh, already going to set you back to two resources to play it. Now you might be able to recoup some of those resources if you're playing the level 2 version of pickpocketing, but that's only going to happen once you've gained a few experience points. If you uh, consider Cheap Shot in the context of an investigator like Wendy Adams, who does have a, a much lower uh, combined combat and agility, I think Cheap Shot feels a, a tad expensive uh, for what you get for it. Alternatively, you know, investigators with access to the rogue card pool could use Cheap Shot to try and evade enemies with evade values that uh, are higher than their fight values. Silas Bishop infused with evil from the uh, Blood on the Altar scenario is a good example of this type of enemy. The uh, Beast of Aldebaran from the Path to Carcosa campaign is another. Skidzotul is going to have a difficult time evading Silas straight up since Silas has an evade value of 7. However, Silas has a fight value of only 3. So given the choice between making an evade test at 4 versus 7 difficulty or a fight test at 7 versus 3 difficulty, I'd uh, gladly pay the two resources for the cheap shot. Chances are you're going to have to pitch uh, cards and resources to pass a 7 difficulty skill test uh, anyway, so paying the two resources for a cheap shot almost seems like a, a bargain by comparison. Unfortunately, enemies with evade skill values that are higher than their fight values are uh, they're few and far between in this game at the moment. I might consider packing a copy of cheap shot to evade Silas for a turn, in uh, Blood on the Altar, since he's a boss and uh, you know you're guaranteed to encounter him if you make it to the end. I probably wouldn't bother packing Cheap Shot, though, just in case uh, I ran into one of those enemies with, uh, with low fight values and high evade values. If uh, evading an enemy is off the table, you could certainly try to use Cheap Shot to kill it outright. Combining Cheap Shot with cards like uh, Vicious Blow from the core set and or uh, Double or Nothing from the Dunwich Legacy de Deluxe expansion, you could do a significant amount of damage in a pinch. You know, if you're doubling Silas uh, Bishop's fight value to 6, it means skill Skids is still 1-up before uh, he pulls from the Chaos Bag, which is okay, and he always has the option to pitch a, pitch a couple cards or resources to that if necessary. However, you know, Cheap Shot is a one-shot deal, and it's uh, not a particularly efficient one at that. But uh, at least it's not a dead card in your deck if uh, the whole evasion plan falls apart. Now, it just occurred to me that you could also play Cheap Shot in combination with Sneak Attack from the core set as a one-two punch of sorts. If you're able to exhaust the enemy using Cheap Shot, you could follow it up with a Sneak Attack for a total of three damage. That's going to cost you two actions and four resources, though, not including any cards or resources you pitch to succeed by two. So uh, I'm not sure it's, it's worth it to play it in that context. Cheap Shot is an un a very unusual card in that it lets you do uh, something few other cards do, namely uh, evade an enemy that is not engaged with you. Now, Skids is probably in the best position to play this card since he's got the highest combined combat and agility skill value in the game, which in turn improves the odds of him succeeding by two. Cheap Shot feels a little bit expensive for what it does, though, and uh, but the fa the effect is very unusual, so I you know I think it's certainly worth exploring uh, in a multiplayer context. The second row card in the pack is the level two version of pickpocketing, an asset uh, from the core set. It costs two resources, two experience points, and it comes with two agility skill icons. It has the talent and illicit traits. This version is fast, and it has the game text response. After you evade an enemy, exhaust pickpocketing. Draw one card or gain res one resource. If you succeed by two or more, do both instead. Now, we've already discussed the level two version of pickpocketing a little bit within the context of Cheap Shot, but uh, this card certainly deserves uh, more attention. The uh, level 2 version of pickpocketing improves upon its core set predecessor in almost every way. First off, it's fast, which is a huge improvement. If you want to play a deck that relies heavily on evasion, you no longer have to lose tempo to get, to, to get that card draw in play with uh, your pickpocketing. Secondly, you get to choose whether you get to draw a card or gain a resource. Sometimes you need one more than the other when you're, when you're playing and, and uh, it's great that pickpocketing now will give you the option of one or the other, and uh, you get to pick the one that will improve your board state. 
And thirdly, if you succeed by two or more during an evasion test against an enemy, you get to draw a card and gain a resource. And, you know, that's pretty sweet uh, at the end of the day when you're, when you're doubling up on uh, cards and resources. Now, I've discussed this at length in other videos, but I think it bears repeating here. If, a, if an investigator wants to succeed by two with any sort of consistency, that investigator probably needs to pitch cards and resources to the skill test. Skids O'Toole and Wendy Adams both have agility skill values of four, which seems pretty amazing, but let's look at that uh, Midnight Masks example again from earlier in the episode for a moment. You know, the average difficulty value of an evade check in that scenario is 2.56. You know, I'm going to be charitable and round that down to two, but it still means Wendy and Skids only have about a 25% chance of succeeding by two if they're two up before the pull. Obviously, those odds really suck, and you're going to need to pitch cards and resources to uh, to that skill test to improve them. That's uh, going to get prohibitively expensive over the course of a scenario, especially if you're also burning uh, through resources to fuel talents such as uh, Hard Knocks or maybe a Streetwise to help your investigation. That's where the uh, level 2 version of pickpocketing comes in. Much like the uh, level 2 version of Opportunist, which was released in the Undimensioned and Unseen Mythos pack and uh, Daring Maneuver, which came out in the Path to Carcosa Deluxe expansion, the uh, level 2 version of pickpocketing takes some of the pressure off because uh, you get some of those cards and resources back with every succeed, successful succeed by 2 test while you're evading. Now, ideally, this will help you sustain that combo turn after turn, and that's pretty cool. I'd, be, I'd be willing to bet there's going to be uh, more invasion cards that use the succeed by uh, two mechanic uh, release down the road, and I think pickpocketing level two is going to be a cornerstone of that type of deck. I wish it gave you a card and a resource for every successful succeed by two test, but uh, that would probably be broken. But uh, we can always dream. I, if if the succeed by two mechanic worked with a card like this that gave you cards and resources, man, I'd I'd be sold. Now, uh, if you were playing pickpocketing in your evasion uh, based decks, upgrading to pickpocketing level two is really a no-brainer. This card improves improves upon its predecessor in almost every way. You don't lose tempo when you play it, and it gives you the option of gaining a card or a resource depending on your board state. If you succeed by two, hey, you get both, which is great if you're playing the uh, with the other succeed by two cards in your deck. One of the uh, issues I run into with my evasion based decks uh, from time to time is the cost curve of the events I run in them, which uh, tends to be a little high for the amount of resources I generate. And I think uh, pickpocketing level two is going to help fix that problem to some extent. You know, getting that, if if you're able to reliably succeed by two and getting that extra resource from time to time, that's going to help uh, pay for some of those events. So I'm really looking forward to playing around with this card in one of my Wendy decks the, that I play when I uh, want to get my evasion fix in this game. Those are the rogue cards in A Phantom of Truth. I think uh, rogues do okay in this pack. Cheap Shot is interesting because obviously the ability to an evade an enemy engaged with another investigator with a fight action is very unique. There's no other card like it in the game right now. And uh, I don't think I'm going to play it in solo, but it certainly could have potential in, in a multiplayer setting. I feel like it's really a Skids card, and Skids could certainly play, could use the help. He, uh, I think most players would uh, consider him to be a little underpowered. However, you know, Jenny and Safina could also uh, put it to good use with the proper support. It is an event after all, so, uh, you know, Safina can try to abuse it with the, uh, the Painted World. However, I do think it's a bit too expensive if you're just planning on damaging enemies with it uh, and not uh, going for the evade. As for the uh, level 2 version of pickpocketing, it's just a very solid card that's going to find a home in just about every evasion based deck that was playing the uh, level 0 counterpart. You know, fast cards, they're awesome. They're they're one of the that's one of the best keywords in the game. Cards that give you resources or other cards are awesome and and frankly pickpocketing does both. So uh, it's just gravy uh, if you play that card and and it's going to see a lot of play, I think. That's going to do it for my review of the Rogue Cards in A Phantom of Truth. If you enjoyed this review, uh, I'd appreciate it if you could leave me a thumbs up. It always helps out the channel a great deal. 
Have you uh, had a chance to play with either Cheap Shot or uh, Pickpocketing Level 2? Let me know in the comments down below. I always enjoy uh, chatting with you about this great game. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to be notified of when I release future content. And uh, make sure you check out the contest that I'm uh, currently running on the channel uh, for the uh, Path to Carcosa Deluxe Expansion Box. You can uh, check out that video and uh, enter that contest. You've still got a, a little bit of time to do that. If you'd like to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.